Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of the Wednesday Watch List. This is my weekly look ahead to New Comic Book Day Wednesday, this week, July 31st, 2024. So this is my rundown of all the books you should be keeping your eye on, looking at when you go to your shop this Wednesday as far as some uh, incentive variants that might already be selling out of premium, some cool variant covers, things you should be reading uh, things people are talking about, etc. This is just my quick rundown of all the books coming out this week that you should be paying attention to when you go to your shop this week. With that all said, hopefully you're enjoying everything here on the channel. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure that you like, you subscribe, you hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. Make sure you go over and check out my toy channel as well. So if you like toys, I've got shows based off of some video game stuff, some top 10 toys, uh, all the fun stuff if you also like toys and collectibles uh, in addition to your comics. Make sure you go over there and subscribe to that channel as well. But if you're just here for the comics, no worries. I got you covered there too. And uh, all you got to do is hang on for a few seconds after the intro. And uh, I'll be right back with this week's books. Alrighty, so let's just get this started and get right into it with my personal picks. So these are the books that are at the top of my pile, things I'm looking forward to coming out this week, uh, you know, basically first, and also things I think you should be paying attention to. Meeting both of those standards, I got to go with the first book here. So Grommets. Grommets number three is coming out this week. I've been thoroughly enjoying this read. It's a lot of fun, a lot of nostalgia, cool art, Cool stories. I like the characters. I'm into this story. So I'm looking forward to the next issue here just to read it alone. But apart from that, awesome in one in 10 incentive cover coming out this week. I know I mentioned it before. I know my buddy Joe mentioned it as well. We knew this one was coming. Saw the cover art a couple months ago on the FOC. And already, shouldn't be surprised, this one is selling well because it is just an awesome cover. Like, that's just a sticker that you're going to have on your deck. Like, that's just an awesome cover, and I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all already. Uh, Pre-sales, 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, it's hitting asking prices are in that 30 to $45 kind of range right now. I'm not saying it's going to hold there or it's going to stay there forever, but, again, I'm not surprised by the early interest in this cover because, once again, some of the other 1 in 10s have already done well to begin with, and then you slap on some cool art as well. You, you got yourself a winner. So, with that said, it's just something to keep an eye on. It's a 1 in 10, so a lot of shops will probably qualify for it if they order at least 10 copies of that image book. I think there's enough readers going around right now, and if not, it should be. There should be more readers because, like I said, it's a good series. It's a good read. But uh, with that said, let's get on to the final issue of Annihilation 2099. Uh, this is issue 5. We're getting another first appearance. Uh, in the in, uh, you know, the 2099 universe, and uh, this time it's Dracula. So we've got uh, cover A as well as the uh, throwback cover B with the old school 2099 border, and then we do have that homage cover for the one in 25. These have been hit and miss. It seems like all of the, uh, you know, actually not hit and miss. The only one that it really hasn't spiked was issue two. So I shouldn't say hit and miss. They've all pretty much hit, except issue two, which is a little bit of just eh, right around ratio. But one hit after an extra week, three hit after an extra week, and four was hot right out of the gate. We'll see what happens with this one. But as of now, this Tomb of Dracula homage is uh, doing meh. It's right in there. Ratio, yes, there was a $50 sale. There was a $30 sale. Asking prices are pretty steep. There's an asking price looking for $50. There's one looking for $100. I don't know if they're going to meet those prices, but based off of the history of the other one in 25s, I can see why they're asking for it. Will the market pay it? We'll see when Wednesday hits because more copies are bound to hit the market once people actually go to their shops, people get their online pre-orders uh, from the big shops like Midtown and Golden Apple, etc. Once those copies hit the market, we'll see where this price actually lands. So once again, this is the watch list. Just something to keep an eye on. It doesn't mean this is going to definitely be hot or definitely be selling for a ton of money come Wednesday. It's just early indicators are showing it might. So it's well worth keeping an eye on. With that said, the other bit that I've uh, been keeping in here in this uh, buzz section is that weapons extraction storyline, that backup storyline for Wolverine and Deadpool, because with the movie and a lot of interest, tons of covers, tons of tie-ins, tons of interest in Deadpool and Wolverine, you know, 
just themselves. So I can see why more and more people are kind of gravitating towards this little backup story that's running throughout a bunch of Marvel books. This week, we get a part three here in uh, this week's Fantastic Four, which is also a tie-in to uh, Blood Hunt, I believe. And uh, we do get a special cover for the weapon extraction, a mirror image to the uh, Wolverine homage and another homage to it, basically. This time with Deadpool showing Wolverine in the reflection of his you know, katanas as opposed to Deadpool in the reflection of Wolverine's claws. So reverse image, mirror image, whatever you want to call it. Uh, shouldn't be surprised that we're seeing this here. Oh, but, but people will probably pick this one up. It, it is a pretty cool homage at that. Uh, but this is part three, and uh, it also has the McNiven after McFarlane. It's always nice when they do give the uh, the credit to the original artist, too. I like it when they put the after. It's just a nice little touch and reminds people that they're acknowledging where they got the art, the idea from. Uh, with that, the next part of the story is in the backup of uh, Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider uh, this week. And uh, here's another cover. This time it's kind of a, you know, I don't want to say it's an homage to... Uh, Batman holding dead Robin because he's not he's not dead he's still alive so it, it's I'm sure it's an homage to something though it, it it probably I just for some reason I'm just drawing a blank if you know what it is please just drop it in the comments uh, I'm not gonna go researching it or digging it up right now my mind is just drawing a blank so uh, I'll rely on you viewers to tell me and you guys after the fact to tell us all uh, what cover this is for so this is uh, the Spider Gwen book. And then there's one more, so another part. We're getting parts three, four, and five this week with part five coming in, Immortal Thor. Another awesome cover here. This is just the regular cover uh, for Thor, but a pretty sweet uh, special cover for the backup story here as we're getting, uh, you know, Dogpool as well as Deadpool. So it's kind of tying in the movie as I have that movie look. And we also got the look from the dog looking like the movie dog, etc. Not a bad cover at all. So I think this is a, a fun cover. I like it. Uh, ties into the movie, which was uh, pretty darn entertaining. If you haven't seen it yet, I suggest you go and check it out. Uh, I don't think it was a letdown at all. I think it was a it was a good flick. And uh, yeah, so go see Deadpool and Wolverine. With that said, Weapon Extraction, these backup stories still have a few more parts coming. We got three more coming in August. We're getting it from uh, uh, part six, seven, and eight still on the way. So not through with this yet. All of this will probably be collected into a single issue once they're done. I guarantee it. I mean, if they're going to collect free comic book day stories and try to sell them to you, there's no reason why they're not going to try to collect this and sell this to you again, too. Just saying. Uh, but also, this week we are getting another new number one in the realm of the X-Men's, you know, world here. So uh, we had X-Men already restarting. We had NYX uh, just last week. This week? We're kicking it off with X-Force. Yes, Deadpool, once again, front and center, leading this new X-Force team. Not surprised. Again, the Marvel's just putting all their money behind Marvel Jesus, as the, he called himself in the movie. Yeah, if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But with that said, multiple covers here on X-Force number one. We've got the regular. We've got the stupid logo cover. I hate these things. I've said it before. Why? It just makes no sense. These are comic books. Uh, we, we're buying these also in part for the art, so don't rob me of cover art by just throwing the logo there. It's just a waste. Unless you're getting a remark or a bunch of signatures, that cover does me no good. But the other cover's not bad there, as well as there's a uh, Scotty Young and I think a Clayton Crane and Nakayama doing the foil cover. Uh, so not bad. Just pick the one that you like. Uh, only two incentives on this one. Uh, there's one in 25 and a Virgin, one in 100 on the Crane there. Uh, not really doing much on either of these as far as pre-sales go. So don't worry about rushing or getting FOMO about missing out on these. Just get the cover that you like best out of this because I'm sure this would be a decent read. I'm probably just going to get the cover A, uh, honestly. I would get the Nakayama, but I don't like buying foil covers and paying that foil premium. So I don't need the shiny. Just saying. But apart from that, also kind of bookending in on this uh, pick section, I would say Blood Hunt. I've been enjoying Blood Hunt, the series. I know it's not for everybody. Not everybody's loving it. Some people are tired of vampires, etc. I've just enjoyed the storyline. I thought it was just a good setup. Uh, and I've just been enjoying it throughout. And we are finally getting the finale towards Blood Hunt this week. So Blood Hunt 5 is coming out. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this wraps up. So here we go. Cover A. Uh, we're getting the other covers here as well, including the same usual suspects that we've seen throughout this run, including the... The mouth variants, I don't know what to call these, but we've had the trade dress in the mouth, 
and then you got the peach momokos and then we've got the uh uh, the Delato connecting covers on the 1 in 10s and 1 in 100s with a 1 in 25 thrown in there for good measure. And the connecting covers, final one. Here we go. We'll look at the full on image slapped all together. So if you got the 1 in 10s, they go together. They'll just be trade dress in there. And then the 1 in, one in 100s would be virgins like this. It would look like this huge mural piece. And if that's not enough for you, there is a 1 in 200, which is a version of one of the B covers or uh, other variants there, open orders. Already some early pre-sales, one under ratio, one above it. So one pre-sale at 160, one pre-sale at 220. For 1 in 200, that's still a lot of money either way. Uh, and then there's one listed right now with four watchers, last one. So I guess uh, they had more than one of the 1 in 200s, 220 bucks again. We'll see if it sells, uh, but I think much like the rest of the series, most of the interest has been on the red band versions. It was an experiment the Marvel tried out. It apparently is hit because now we're getting many, many more. We're getting Wolverine red bands and probably more coming our way in the future. Uh, just another way for them to upcharge us just a little bit more with these extra poly bags and an extra dollar price to maybe throw an extra panel or two or different art i don't know it's i mean it's cool but at the same time just pick a lane pick a lane don't give me two versions just pick one and go with it but you know if you want to go back to the max titles do that i don't know but i'm still gonna get this as much as I, i'm here kind of hemming and hawing about it i'm still gonna get the red band of this uh because that's the one i want to read uh, and there's the one in 25, which obviously by now you know how well these have been doing the whole way. All of these EC horror homages. Here is another classic homage, this time to Vault of Horror number 30 with the subway arm. It's not a perfect one for one matchup here because you got all the heroes kind of standing and not sitting on the subway. And it's Spidey, well, Miles Spidey uh, web instead of holding on to, you know, subway handle. But it is what it is. Not bad. I don't know. Uh, I think orders now have kind of met the market. So prices on these last two haven't hit the highs of those early ones. So these are not taking anybody by surprise now. Uh, so I'm not surprised to see that, yes, early pre-sales, best offer on 85. And then a sale for 60 bucks that had the regular red band, which costs like seven bucks on its own uh, with that one. So maybe that's a 50 bucks you're looking at there for the one at 25. Asking prices are still a little bit higher, looking for $70 to $90. But I think this one will still more settle in in that kind of $60 to $70 kind of range when all is said and done. Still a decent return if you could get this at a good price or get this near ratio, but uh, not near where the other ones were. Like those early issues were hitting a couple hundred bucks. So uh, I don't think we're going to get that out of uh, this one. Also, with Blood Hunt, we are wrapping up the Midnight Sun storyline here. Uh, so here we got to cover a, as well as one of these, the Hildebrandts again, uh, and then, you know, another B cover mixed in there. And then since it's the Hildebrandt Marvel masterpiece card, you know, you're getting the virgin version on a one to 50. I almost had this in as nut shot of the week, but it's not quite a nut shot. It's, it's kind of hurtling, but man, they really love that underneath shot on those cards. Don't they, man, all the Hildebrandt cards just trying to get that low grundle shot. I don't know. Whatever. I, I don't know. I just don't see the point of these as comic covers. I think it's lazy and it's just not, it just doesn't do it for me. I, don't know. I, I like the cards. I like them as cards. I have them as cards. Uh, I just don't need it done again as a comic cover. But that said, let's get to the reading list. Not a ton of books here uh, on the reading list this week. I'm going to read the stuff that I just kind of listed as well. But on top of that, we are also getting Saga back. So Saga. Issue 67. I'm going to have to refresh my memory where I left off, but I'm looking forward to reading Saga again. I just wish there weren't such long breaks, because like I said, I end up forgetting where we left off exactly. Like, I have a vague remembrance of, of where we were, but I really got to reread it now just to put myself back into that place and back into that headspace uh, for this issue. But still, looking forward to it. As I'm also looking forward to, I believe, the wrap-up of X-Men Air of Apocalypse to see how this storyline is shaken out. Granted, it's not been great, but I kind of have to see it through at this point. I like Apocalypse, and I kind of want to see where we end up here. Only two covers. You got an A cover, and we got a B cover, and that's it. So pick the cover you like, and that's the one you can roll with. Additionally, 
Ultimate Spider-Man still rolling on with issue seven. I feel like we should be deeper into the series by now, but nope, we're only at number seven. Uh, and here we go. I think it's because all the reprints, all the reprints are just making it feel like this series has been out forever. But I am still enjoying this title. Out of all the Ultimate titles, I am still enjoying Spider-Man, where the others are kind of not really doing it as much for me, I guess. But uh, we'll get into that later. Um, see, maybe they could turn some of those other storylines around. Uh, but this one only got an A cover and a B cover, as well as a uh, one incentive. So there is a one in 25 as well. Uh, so you get that Ben Parker cover. I don't know. It's all right, I guess. Not doing anything. So if you like it, go ahead and pick it up. But uh, I don't know. I'm just fine with like the A or the B. Just going to stick with the A because it just matches the rest of the books that I got. So they kind of look uniform. They have a uniform like styling to the Ultimate books to start with. So that's why I go usually go with the A. So they it looks uniform when I'm going through my boxes. I don't know. Kind of like that. But with that said, I am still liking Ultimate Spider-Man. However, in my Just Gotta Do It section, which I'm sure you get, well, I don't know if I'm sure if you know it by now, but by now this is the section where it's just books that I just got to get them. Like, habit alone, I'm just not going to stop getting them. So these could be titles that I've fallen behind on reading, I haven't read in a while, or I'm not even enjoying reading them. But regardless of how much I'm enjoying the storyline, my inner collector will not let me have a gap in my run. So I'm going to get it anyway. And with that, we're talking about Amazing Spider-Man. I didn't love Gang War. I'm not loving this Goblin storyline either, but it's Amazing Spider-Man. I got to continue my run. Just got to do it. So here we go. Uh, issue 54. I think we're at at this point. Uh, this is the cover A. Uh, terrible cover. Uh, and we got B covers and we got a Delato cover in there as well, which is a connecting cover, which we'll get to in a second. Incentives here with one in 25s and then virgin versions of the others with the one in 50 and the one in 100. Nothing uh, doing on as far as pre-sales go. You can find any of these for uh, under ratio if you want them. And like I said, that Delato, both the trade dress version and the incentive version, uh, they connect. It's just a two-parter, but they connect with the last issue. So 53 and 54, boom, go together and you get a pretty cool Sinister Six here. Yeah, kind of like it. Classic, but uh, yeah, kind of cool. With that, let's move on to... New number ones. So we got new number ones this week. Uh, some of these could be hits. Some of these could be misses. I'm not going to do the whole synopsis right up. I'm only going to do that if I need the extra help or I think uh, we really need to share what these titles are about. Because a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory this week, at least. So uh, let me know in the comments if you thought me putting the little uh, write up in was uh, helpful on the new number ones or not. Because I know half the time I didn't even bother reading them and I just kind of mumbled and babbled over it anyway. But uh, you let me know wh which way works better for you as a viewer. Uh, but starting us off, we have Super Pet Special Bite Identity Crisis. Bite Identity. I'm sorry. Bite Identity Crisis. Get a little tongue-tied there with that one. Okay. Super Pets. I know the movie has been back on uh, HBO again lately, but uh, yeah. Okay. So we got... Uh, shoot. I can't think of Nightwing's dog. I know Nightwing's got a dog. I just can't think of the dog's name but that's where we're getting featured on the cover a there are other covers here as well including a b and a c cover here with other famous super pets uh and also like i said this is kind of tying into the movie uh with like that the lex luther siamese cat thingy and uh you got the super kitty and then we got gleek and you got uh I don't know, you know, a bunch of different characters there. It's kind of a mix, or, mix and mashup because they're not all from the movie because uh, the kangaroo is different from Wonder Woman than uh, than the pig that they had in the in the movie. Anyway, I don't want to go down the, the whole lane of uh, the Super Pets animated movie, which wasn't bad, uh, by the way. But what's most interesting about this, I know, uh, as I'm babbling on about a Super Pet storyline, uh, is that there is a 1 in 25 for this. There's a 1 in 25 incentive and... Uh, while there have been no pre-sales, people are seeking a pretty penny for this bad boy with asking prices looking for $75 to $115. I don't know they're going to get that, but I find it interesting that they're asking that. I also think, well, there's not going to be a ton of these because how many shops are going to order on 25 copies of a Super Pet special? I get it, but I don't know. We'll see. Just interesting. Something Again, something to keep an eye on, something to watch. Does this mean it's going to be a hot book? I don't know, but 
asking prices are pretty steep. If people start paying it, you know, we might be looking at this at the end of the week. Uh, but with that said, another Godzilla Rivals. Uh, this time, Godzilla Rivals versus Manda. Okay, so another one shot. I mean, these are cool. If you like Godzilla, you got to cover A and you got to cover B. And then IDW does the A, B, 1 and 10, which, again, is my favorite way of doing comics. I like it when it's just two covers and one incentive. That's perfect to me. So if you want the incentive, you can go buy the Whether it be a 1 in 10, 1 in 25, whatever, just one incentive and two other covers is plenty. That said, those are your covers for uh, the Godzilla versus Manda. Again, nothing really going on as far as pre-sales go. Sometimes these IDW 1 in 10s are hits right out of the gate. But right now, this is right around ratio. Yeah, they might be down as cheap as like 8 bucks. It might go as high as like 15 but it, it's not going double uh, ratio or anything just yet. Which is the same for the next book, which is the Lego Ninjago Shatterspin uh, issue 1. So we're starting a new series here, or mini, I guess, with the Ninjago uh, characters. Son's a big fan. Uh, I did get... Uh, the first uh, series, or the last series, I guess you would say, uh, for this Le uh, Lego Ninjago series, and got a couple of the one in tens because I thought they would be interesting, and they are. They were. There, I mean, not a ton of them out there, but I thought there would be more interest in the aftermarket because Ninjago is a pretty popular product as far as it is with the kids. But I guess, you know, real as realistically, most comic collectors are my age and not kids these days. So, yeah, it is what it is. A cover. B cover as well. Two options. Not bad. And if you want it, there is another one in 10 here. Yeah, pretty cool. It has that kind of a Tom Whalen kind of vibe with the solid block kind of like colors. Uh, yeah. Plus Lego. I don't know. Pretty cool. Uh, with that, we're also going over to Marvel now for another number one. This time, Black Widow Venomous. All right. So our Venom Black Widow getting a... Uh, I think, this, I think this is a one shot. I don't think this is a mini. Uh, but here we go. A lot of cool covers here. Choose pretty awesome. And Huck Lee's not bad. All the covers are pretty great. And you get a one in 50 on that uh, Derek Chu as the incentive, which is, eh, we'll see. It's one of those things where, again, I think it's fishing. We'll see if it's going to actually hit over that ratio mark or not. Because uh, so far, the early sales for right or under ratio. Meanwhile, the asking prices are seeking $70, $90, $100. Just because they're asking doesn't mean that's what it's going to sell for. As you can see, the market is willing to pay about ratio. We'll see if they're willing to pay more or if those prices will come down. That's why we're watching it. We are also getting another what if. So we're getting another one of these Disney what ifs. This time, what if Donald Duck became Wolverine? Because I don't know why. I'm sure this will be fun. I guess I don't know. It's just not something I really want either. But they're made. They made it. So if you want to flip through it, check it out. I mean, I didn't think I'd want the Uncle Scrooge book with the Infinity Eye either, but that wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad read. Uh, but this one, we'll see. Donald Duck is Wolverine. Maybe a chuckle or two inside. We'll see. I don't know. I'll give it a try. But cover A, uh, more covers than we need. This is this is my point of why I'm talking about the A being an incentive is enough because a title like this, we don't need all these covers. I don't need. A, B, C. I don't need to see Ron Lim's version of a Wolverine duck or Peach Momoko's version of a Wolverine duck or uh, Phil Noto's version of a Wolverine duck. I don't need all these versions of a Wolverine duck. Scotty Young, too. It's too much. Too much. But with that said, pick the cover you like. And there are even a couple of incentives here as well with a 1 in 50 and a 1 in 100. Nothing doing on the pre-sales, so uh ratio or uh, under ratio or, or thereabouts so if you want them you can go ahead and buy them but uh yeah nothing to really worry about there ms marvel is giving us another annual in this infinity watch story series of stories whatever i don't know this reminds me of those crappy old you know uh annual uh stories that they would sell across a bunch of annuals across a bunch of titles and they, a lot of times they weren't great there is it was just a forced way to get you to go and buy a bunch of annuals you weren't going to buy anyway and that's what I'm feeling here. I'm just not into this. And uh, I'm already complained about this is the cover A. And there's a couple other covers here, including the connecting cover, which until I see more, I showed you how they don't even connect. So I don't get it. I don't understand. Don't match up. But maybe it'll all make sense at the end. But so far, we still haven't gotten uh, the previews for the next 
connecting covers. I think we have the Wolverine, which is next, but that also didn't fit the first five. And then we got Hulk. So we'll see if the Hulk one fills in some of the gaps because right now it, it, it don't connect. But whatever. If you want to continue this storyline or check this out or a big Ms. Marvel fan, obviously you're probably going to go buy this. Me, I'm sitting this one out. I, I could care less. It's just, it's just not for me. I haven't been reading these Blade Runner comics. They've been coming out with like new series after new series. I don't know if they're uh, they're good or not. If they're good, please let me know in the comments down below because I did like the original Blade Runner, but I still haven't even gotten around to uh, the Ryan Gosling one. Uh, was it 2049? I haven't been meaning to watch it, but the the runtime being near three hours has always been daunting. It's like a like I never feel like I have enough time. Like when I get around to say, all right, I got time to watch a movie. I'm gonna wind down for the night and watch a movie, but I'm like. Shoot, it's like 11 o'clock. I don't got time. I'm going to stay up till 2 to watch this thing. So that's why I haven't gotten around to it yet. But let me know how these comics are if you're reading them because we do have Tokyo Nexus starting up this week with a bunch of covers here. Uh, A's and we got a Paul Pope there in the middle and a couple others here as well. I mean, a couple of these are kind of cool. And then the Pope's also got a uh, black and white uh, version of that. And then we got a sketch cover. Uh, no incentives here. So you buy the cover that you like. And uh, yeah, like I said, let me know if it's any good. Weird title uh, coming out with a new number one is this Bottoms Up. This is like 10 bucks. And this time I did put in the little write-up thing because I wanted to know what exactly this was. So apparently it's one part recipe blog, one part comic book with a dash of sardonic humor. A dollop of existential dread in a pinch of gig economy com camaraderie. I don't know what the hell any of that means. I don't know what the hell this is going to be. It's coming out, and it's going to cost you 10 bucks. Come published on a cardstock cover with foil accents. So if you like foil, there you go. And then this one might be for you. I don't know. It might be weird. It might be good. I don't know. I, I like a good recipe. I like to eat. Uh, so who knows? Who knows? I don't know if I'm going to pick this one up, though. But if you do, please tell me what's actually inside this thing. Because I'm kind of curious. I don't know if I'm $10 curious, though. You know what I mean? Eh, that said... Moving on, I'm also kind of curious about this one. Final Fight. This was a fun game. This was a fun game. Back in the old days of uh, old school video gaming, like a spiritual, spiritual like successor to like Double Dragon, really. Uh, kind of cool. So we're getting a new comic series out of this. And uh, we got a cover A, uh, B cover, a blank cover if you want sketches on it. Oh, sorry. We got B cover, C cover, and there's the sketch cover. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Oh, oh, darn it. I forgot to put in. There is an incentive. I think it's a one in five, and I don't have it in the deck. I actually missed that. But there is a one in uh, one in five. It's actually not a bad cover. Uh, but looking at my little preview here, I forgot to put it in here. So let I me mean, keep an eye on it. It's the kind of weird thing that might get a little pop. I'm not saying it's going to sell for a ton. I think it's like a 1 in 5 or a 1 in 10. So at best, maybe it sells for like a little bit above ratio. So it could be like 10 to 20 bucks. But uh, right now, I don't think it's doing anything. So uh, don't go rushing out trying to go scoop up all your Final Fight incentives. But it's one of those oddball things that could, over time, gain some interest if uh, nostalgia strikes the right chord with uh, with comic collectors out there. So um, sorry again, I didn't put the, the incentive in here. But we're going to move on to Firefly. So Boom is giving us this Firefly one-shot versus. So uh, I think it's going to just tell some like little anthology storylines in here. Uh, I also think this thing is like eight bucks or it's more expensive. It's a regular, it's not a regular comic price. Uh, so I think it's a little, little bit of a premium price. A couple of covers here. Uh, we got an A cover as well as a B cover by Suspiria. There is an unlockable. That's a version of the cover A. And then there's a one in five virgin recolored uh, of the B cover. And then there's a one in 10 virgin as well. Uh, the only one I grabbed uh, any pre-sale prices on, because it's the only one that seems to be doing anything minor, is the Unlockable, which we did have an early pre-sale way back in June that got 16 bucks. And then currently there were two listed. One that's only asking eight bucks, one that's asking 25 bucks. And that's kind of where this weird Unlockable market has been. Some have hit and been like 20 bucks. Others nobody cares about and sell for basically cover price or or they're close to it. Uh, so that's what kind of what we got going on here. Don't know if Firefly is, is as much as I enjoyed the show. Love the show. Love the movie. Uh, but the comics, I, I don't know if there's enough of a fan base to really drive this one up in price. But 
We'll see. Boom keeps doing these unlockables. And considering I don't know how many shops are going to order a ton of these, they might not even unlock this cover. So it could be collectible among Firefly collectors. Or maybe that's the only people who care about it and it won't matter. So we'll see. Interesting title coming up next because it's just weird enough to just make me curious. This is for you, AOA. Florida Man. Florida Man versus Hogzilla 2. Apparently, I missed the first mini. Uh, but here we go. Florida Man versus Hogzilla. Uh, I, get, I get the synopsis here. Uh, yeah, seems like it could be kind of fun. I mean, a dude, Samurai Sword, trying to fight the giant wild boar that's uh, roaming the Florida countryside, I guess. Fun covers here. This is a wraparound cover, by the way. I don't have the back of it, but this is a wraparound cover. And then the other covers are homages. We have this one, which is a nice homage to, you know, old school National Lampoon's Vacation. You remember that one? So pretty well done there. And then we've got this one, which is a Godzilla uh, homage to the movie poster there. Also, not bad. And it's about a dude trying to hunt a wild boar. Kind of fun. I might give this a give this a look see, and maybe you have to go look for that first series since this is part two. Uh, I don't know. And then our last book in the new number one section is uh, what's well, Run DMC. I don't need to tell you any more than that. We got a comic about Run DMC. I'm down. I loved Run DMC growing up. I don't know about the rest of you, but Run DMC that those are my dudes. Uh, anyway, new number one. Cool. Moving on, later prints. So we've got a bunch. Ugh, Marvel's giving us a bunch of those incentives, which I know if you've been watching the show, watching the channel, you know I don't love them, but I got to cover them anyway. But before we get to those, let's start in with the facsimiles. DC giving us the Justice League of America. You get the facsimile, four bucks. You get the sketch or the blank cover for five bucks, and you get the foil version for six bucks. Pick the one you like. You like it, shiny foil. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Pay the two extra dollars. Uh, but yeah, so Justice League. There you go. Also, we're getting the next issue. It's been like two months, but we're getting the next issue of the remastered lore comic. So uh, pretty cool covers here as well. Uh, again, it's remastered. I think it's uh, the dialogue is like rewritten. I guess maybe it was hard to read the first time out, but uh, remastered edition of lore. Uh, and uh Apart from these two cool covers, there is a 1 in 10 incentive. And, yes, this is a pretty suggestive cover. And that's probably why it could be seeing a little bit of action this week. We have one pre-sale for the 1 in 10 selling about double ratio at about 20 bucks. There's one listed that's seeking $45. Plus $30 shipping because it's out of the UK. For a US buyer, it's 75 bucks. For this one in ten, it's a tall order there, Nordberg. But at the same time, I don't know you're gonna get this in a lot of places. Just saying. And so if you want it, good luck to you. It's kind of cool. I can see why you might want to buy it. I don't know. Like I said, it's it's art. It's like it's arty. It gives you that little bit of like you just gotta keep looking at it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of dig it. I also dig this storyline: falling in love on the path to hell, number one. Third print. I actually kind of like this purple. This purple kind of pops. But I already got the a couple of the other covers, so I don't need to go buying later prints just to as much as I like them. It's just it just costs too much money to keep doing that. I mean, another five bucks. I already have a few copies of this number one. How many do I need? But it is kind of cool in purple. And if you haven't read this yet or you haven't given this a try, this ain't bad. This is be a good this be a good entry level book for you. You can get this pretty cool cover and you get it for five bucks. Uh same deal here with Rook. Fourth printing, I like this series. I'm looking forward to the next issue. Uh, but if you want a fourth printing, you haven't gotten the other ones, here's your chance. Now we'll get to Marvel and their pile of incentives. Deadpool, Wolverine, World War III. Not really interested or into this story at all. It was kind of lame, first issue. I don't even know if I got around to trying the second issue, but second issue is getting a second print just so they can make you buy a second print incentive, which... It's all right for virgin art, but there's a lot of dead space there. I hate dead space. Uh, it should be covered, filled with something in the background. I don't know. It just looks unbalanced. That said, early pre-sales on this one. 
uh, got 40 bucks, $65, $70 already. And then there's only one listed that I could find also seeking 70 bucks. That's kind of where some of these, uh, incentives hit not a ton of volume usually on them, but they always generally are selling for a little bit above double ratio. It's just kind of what Marvel's been doing. And it's kind of the, every, seems like every one of them basically does that. Like it does like double ratio. Uh, and again, not a ton of volume, uh, but they're there. Up next, Scarlet Witch number one, second print, using the Hidden Gems cover, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and then they use the Jenny Frizen for the 1 in 25 incentive, but a black and white version? All right, I guess. I think it's lazy, but hey, they could have chosen, you know, worse art. So I do like this. Couple of early pre-sales on this one uh, for 60 to 70 bucks, and they're none listed. That's kind of odd. Usually there's one. But so far, none listed. But when they do, they're probably going to be in that $60 to $70 range if I were to put money on it. Not done yet. We've got, uh, that's two. We've got more. Ultimate Spider-Man number six. Yes, to coincide with the release of issue seven. I don't understand. Are these selling out? Do we really need second prints for all of these? I didn't think we did, but we're getting it anyway. Marvel issue six, uh, second print. Cool cover. And then there's a 1 in 25, obviously, because, well, they got to try to sell it to you. And it's a virgin version of the cover A without the white border, etc. Same deal as they've done this whole run. So, yeah. How's this doing? Well, yeah, people keep buying this stuff, so they're going to keep doing it. Uh, 40 to 60 bucks early pre-sales. One listed, looking for 60. As I said, that's par for the course these days. And uh, if you've had enough of these incentive second prints, I have as well. But unfortunately, we are not done. We also are getting a second print for Uncle Scrooge and the Infinity Dime. Why? There were tons of covers and tons of copies. Is this really something we needed a second print of? Did nobody, is there people who couldn't get a hold of issue one? Okay, well, now you're covered. You can get this one for eight bucks and might as well incentivize people to buy even more and have a one in 25 on this one as well. So the Peach Momoko as a virgin is the one in 25 on this. One pre-sale here. It got 60 bucks. what I tell you? 60 bucks and they're an unlisted right now. But I'm sure they'll pop up and I'm sure they'll pop up looking for $60. With that said, we still have more. One more, I believe, for you. This time it's Venomverse Reborn, number one, the second print. Once again, are shops really sold out of these issue ones? Why do we need these? And why do we need to have a 1 in 25 incentive for it? Well, it'll be out there. But for this one, I found no pre-sales and none listed. So maybe nobody ordered this one. I don't know. We'll find out on Wednesday. But thankfully, now, after, what was it, five or six of those? We are done with the Marvel second print, one in 25s. But let's kind of move it on over, or start to work towards the end here. We'll get to the Stormbreakers, which, wrapping up for this month, have been Deadpool and Wolverine, once again. Two of them together. Uh, this is on Helverine 3, so you got these two kind of taking a picture together. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we've got this one call back to, you know, the classic Wolverine solo mission. Was it 132 uncanny? Uh, but this time with Deadpool, one a little, uh, you know, little inner tube floating around with him in the sewer. Fun, fun little cover. This is on X-Force number one. If uh, you didn't have enough options of other covers, you can get the Stormbreakers cover there. Also, we're getting the last bit of the Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe in variants. I was going to say incentives. But they're not incentives. They're just variant covers. Amazing Spider-Man is giving us this. You got the spider buggy. That's kind of fun. It's like a Looney Tunes thing, especially too with the food here and all that. All right, not bad. I dig it. Kind of fun. Uh, the Black Widow. Yeah, okay. She's chopping her in half. Cool. Captain Marvel. If you're still buying Captain Marvel, well, here you go. Uh, an Infinity Gauntlet wielding Wade Wilson. And he's also holding Cosmic Cube. Look at that. Eh, not bad. 
Uh, Fantastic Four. Also, we got one here with uh, you know, the whole team getting uh, getting choked out. Uh, gonna need you to trust me. The Invisible Woman is dead too. Uh, uh, you get it because she's invisible. Fine. Another one. Oh, not done yet. Not done yet. We're also getting one on Thor. So a couple of these had the weapon extraction covers. Now they also have Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. There's just too many variants. You're doing too many things at once every month. Just pick a theme for the month. Just have that. Stop doing all these multiple things every month. It's just too much. It's too much. People can't collect everything. You're putting too much pressure on people to want to collect everything. I don't know. It's burning out the market, in my opinion. Too many covers. But I do like covers. And uh, unfortunately, my cover section is really only uh, one book at this point. There's been a bunch of stuff that I've liked that we've already shown. But uh, for cover purposes, because I, I don't know, I'm just not really into the stories in these. But Darth Maul, Black, White, and Red, number four. All right. Gist. I like EM Gist. Pretty cool at cover A. And there's a 1 in 25 incentive. That ain't bad either. So, boom. You can get this too. Surprisingly, I would have thought this would be going for a bit more, but this one in 25 pre sales, 15 to 25 bucks, ratio and under. Asking prices, however, 33 and a hundred dollars. Ooh, hundred dollars. That's kind of uh, ballsy to seek that, but hey, maybe they get it. Who knows? But those weren't the only covers on this Darth Maul book because uh, there's another one on here and it's a bit of a doozy, but it doesn't quite fit. My favorite covers. Because it fits here. WTF, Gary. WTF. What the fuck does WTF mean? What the fuck? Oh. That's right. WTF. Whew. Take a look at this, bad boy. Not trying to besmirch another legend. I'm just saying. Walt Simonson. This is not a great cover. The proportions are all wonky. Look at the size of that hand. I get it. It's in the foreground, but still. Look at the sleeves out way out to the side. Like, how far out does his elbow go? Like, you just don't... I don't know. This don't make sense. And then you just mix in with just a lot of this busyness in the background. And then his head is, just looks like it was drawn and sketched on a piece of, like, lined notebook, notebook paper. It's just... I don't know. I'm just not liking this one. Just not liking it at all. Again, legend. I get it. But just because legends can still make mistakes. Legends commit turnovers. Just saying. Because another one uh, that just, I just, just it doesn't fit. Sometimes you put a legend on a book and it just doesn't fit. This doesn't fit. You know what else doesn't fit? Stan Sakai on Helverine. To me, this just doesn't fit. This is worse than the Eastman, or it's right in line with the Eastman. It's just not, I don't like it. It's just not, it's not a good fit. That's all. That's all. Again, I'm not trying to besmirch a legend. Just saying, this ain't great. It looks like a parody. That said, that's all I got for the WTF section for this week. And we will wrap up the show with the cheesecake covers. I know you all love them. I like them too. That's why I do these every week. And we'll start it off with the oddball stuff. Daisy chain. Uh, yeah. Cool. Alfred Page. Also, uh, he did that blowtorch book. I can't always forget to do the talk about the blowtorch book, but uh, Daisy chain. So like he's involved in this one too. So uh, give it a look. See a uh, couple cool covers here. Uh, it's also about like a, she's a serial social socialite serial killer. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. I guess we're getting kind of a American Psycho 2 kind of thing going. But, uh, yeah, I mean, check out some of these covers here. Uh, I like the one there in the middle with the, uh, you know, the blood spatter, like, there in the mirror. I mean, the one in the, the bed with all the blades and all that stuff's kind of fun, too. But uh, I like the mirror. And the mirror one also gives us a, uh, a more risque version. Not totally risque, but a more risque version. So you can get that as well. And there is also a 1 in 25 incentive that they didn't show the art, but going off, this was a Kickstarter, going off the Kickstarter and matching up the, the creators involved, I'm guessing it might be a version of this cover on the 1 in 25. I could be wrong. Again, this is my guess because this was a Kickstarter. I believe it was a, a print, but I'm just guessing that this could be the 1 in 25 art. 
because it wasn't shared uh, when I was checking all the sites and everything uh, with the previews and whatnot. So we'll see. But still, pretty interesting covers there. I have no idea what the guts will be about. Uh, I mean, I mean, not what they'll be about. If they're any good or not, I'll probably give it a look. See, because like I said, eh, it seems kind of interesting. Uh, but with that, we also have Grim Fairy Tales number eighty six. Cool. We got this. We also have other options here as well, including a witch there, and a... pick the one that you like. And our one in the middle gets a variant version for the one in twenty. I don't know if it's going to have the uh, art border there on the book. I don't think it will, but that's the image that I was able to find. So, yeah. Good luck, again, finding these 1 in 20 incentives on these books because they're not always the easiest things to find for these uh, Zenoscope books. But they're out there, and there are collectors. Not a ton, but there are collectors. Uh, randomly, this hollowed book, I just like this B cover. You got a nice back, back shot there. Not too bad, right? Issue 7 from Keenspot, and it's 7 bucks, though. So. Pretty steep uh, for a monthly. Uh, then we have the Santos Sisters cover here. It's kind of a fun Archie like homage parody thing going on here. So put this one in here because it still has the, the Archie beachy bikini thing going. So that's why we put it in the cheesecake section. But it also still has that uh, homage flair there. Uh, and then we have this title, this Niobe Outbreak out of uh, Antarctic. So we got a couple of covers here. Uh, some of them are uh, more expensive, so uh, these other covers aren't technically incentives, but they are premium versions, so they cost a little bit extra. But, yeah, they're the covers. Pretty cool. Uh, and then Valiant. I almost put this in just the regular cover section. It's not very cheesecakey, but it is kind of a little. I don't know. I just really dig the art. This is just a very good cover. Uh, I'm getting Medusa vibes, obviously. Uh, and you got Ninjak doing the upside down spidey thing but i don't know pretty cool and they have their limited trade dress version which helps you see more of the art so i actually prefer this one in this case i like the limited trade dress they fill because he fills the background with the hair so the, the art is balanced here i don't know i like it and then for our final book spider gwen ghost spider uh get another issue here villa lobos cover pretty awesome uh there's another uh one of the b covers i think i'm you know apart from the uh deadpool variants that are mixed in here as well as the weapon extraction book too i think i might have missed one of the other covers here uh or just missed the cover a i don't know but they're still pretty cool and plus the one there she's reading moon knight so that's one of those marvel uh reader books like we had cap i think last week reading uh namor so this time we got uh moon knight uh being read here by uh by Ghost Spider. And then that uh, Villa Lobos in the middle is a uh, variant 1 in 50 uh, incentive version if you want to go and buy it. It's actually selling for under ratio, so we don't need to put any prices on it just yet. Because uh, if you want it, you can get it for like 40 or 45. Not a ton under, but it's still under ratio. Just saying. And with that said, we are actually done early. This is the last week of the month. A lot of times at the end of the month, we don't get a lot of books. Uh, and that's the case for this month. Next week, we'll probably get a bit more because it's the start of a new month, and uh, maybe we'll get some more fun stuff. But with that all said, I still say thanks for stopping by. So I just want to thank you for all the support and uh, supporting the channel here. If you like collectibles and toys, make sure you go and check out Toy Informer and go subscribe over there as well. I'm having a lot of fun with my new channel and doing some fun shows over there. And uh, don't worry, I'm still going to be doing all of my content over here as well. Just trying to split my time as best I can. And uh, I'll see you all soon with some more content. All right. Later.